Hello YouTube divers, this is Water Eye 122 and today I'm going to be going over my the discography of English progressive rock band Yes. This band is just unbelievable. And here today on my second episode of Magic Metal Mondays, um, I will be discussing them. This is my very first special edition episode of it. Um, because Yes is not a metal band like most of the other bands that have been on this list, um, I decided to include them on here because, you know, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. And also, I apologize for filming the second episode of Magic Metal Mondays on a Thursday. Um, <clears throat> stuff has just been getting in my way, like schoolwork and all that fun stuff, so... Um, yeah, my YouTube schedule has shifted just a tad. Um, but no need to worry because I'll be getting back on the schedule hopefully very soon. Tomorrow I will be releasing NFL Predictions Week 8 Edition, so stay tuned for that. So, because Yes has so many um, albums in their discography, I'm going to be going over half of them and half the albums in, the, in, the, in this first video, this part one, which will be taking a look at the at albums 19 through number not through number 10 and then part two which should be either to to tomorrow or saturday um <clears throat> i will be taking a look at albums nine through one so without further ado let's get started okay so i know a lot of people would probably put this this one this low on the i mean this one is their worst. For me, it's the 1997 album, Open Your Eyes, mainly just because it is far too long, and there's not really a lot of great songs on that album to enjoy. Now, needless to say, I do think the title track is just a, is pretty good. The song Wonder Love, I think, was the biggest hit off that album, but really, outside of those, there's not a lot to dive into, and like I said, it's just far too long. Um... Too long for a mediocre album, so open your eyes is my least favorite. <clears throat> um, moving on to number 18, the 1987 album Big Generator. Now, I know there are a lot of fa fans of the 80s, yes, like the 90125 lineup, but in my opinion, this album is just not that great. This followed up um, 90125. Eh, it was an okay follow-up. I mean, 90125 is such, in my opinion, a masterpiece. You might hear that in my next video, or maybe this one, I don't know. Um, but really, there's just not... Like with Open Your Eyes, there's not really a lot to enjoy. Um, I feel like the title track, Big Generator, is just way too heavy, like too much in your face. And that's really saying a lot when it comes to Yes. But... There are some good songs on here, like Love Will Find A Way, which was originally supposed to be sung by Stevie Nicks, um, Rhythm of Love, and of course, Holy Lamb. Um, and title track, like I said, does get a little bit of notice. Um, but really, like with Open Your Eyes, it's just a mediocre album. Just not too many, not a lot of great moments on there, so... That's why I put this one a little bit lower. Number 17 is their most recent album, 2014's Heaven and Earth. Now, the reason why I placed this album this low on the list is mainly because there is no John Anderson. Without John Anderson, I feel like yes is not yes. That's That just goes to show you how much his voice means to um, the band and how their music sounds. Um, but regardless, this is a pretty good no I no it's not good it's not a good album it's mediocre just like the previous two albums not really good um that's needless to say John John Davison the singer on this album does a good job he writes really good lyrics but overall this album is just not really the way you want to go out sadly this is the final album to feature classic bait Classic Yes bassist Chris Squire before his death in 2015. Um, and it's kind of sad to see the final album by Yes end on such a eh note. But on the, but on the positive side, at least this album has a freaking killer album cover. 
Yeah. All right, moving on to number 16. Oh, boy. Number 16 is the 1991 album, Union. Now, this featured... Now, on paper, this should have been the best Yes album ever, but really, it's just, eh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, this did feature some members of the classic lineup, some members of the 90125 lineup. Um, Rick Wakeman calls this album Onion, because every time he hears it, it brings tears to his eyes. Um, in my opinion, I just... That doesn't really connect. Um, but needless to say, one of my all-time favorite Yes songs is on this album, The More We Live, Let Go. That is just such an, ugh, such a great heartstring tugger. Yeah, well, I, said, I totally said that wrong. Um, anyways, so, yeah, with that being said, Union is just, eh, fine. But, like with the previous albums, not a lot of good moments on here, so. That's why I put this one this low. Now, number 15, probably one of the most surprising albums you'll see in this video, is the 1980 album, Drama. Now, I know this is a criminally underrated album. Like, there are some great songs on here, like Machine Messiah, Tempest Fugit, Into the Lens, all that jazz. But, however, the main setback with this album that I have, um, like with Heaven and Earth, no John Anderson. I'm okay with the fact that Rick Wakeman's also not on this album. Jeff Downs, who used to be with the Buggles, um, was on this album, and Heaven and Earth, and basically their final two albums. He does a good job. Um, but it's mainly John Anderson is the reason why I'm not really lagging this album. Needless to say, Trevor Horn, who is, yes, his current producer, just an FYI, um, does a really good job of singing. Um, but like with Heaven and Earth, this this album, without John Anderson, this, this album just, you know takes me off, you know. Uh, uh. Um, moving on to number f 14, which is the debut album from 1969, Yes. Now, this album is this low on the list because it's a debut album. What more can I say? I mean, it's it's just a album to see where the band is going. And plus, there aren't really a lot of songs on this album that are written by the band. There's a lot of cover songs on here, like I see you, um, <clears throat> and a couple of others. Um, I think Looking Around is one of those cover songs. Let me know in the comments below. Um, but needless to say, my two, my, I have three favorite tracks off this album, which are Yesterday and Today, Sweetness, and Survival. Survival being, Survival is basically what boosts this album a lot. Same thing with Sweetness and Yesterday and Today. But, yeah, it just goes to show you where this band is going to be going in future albums. So, yeah. Moving on to number 13, which is the 1978 album, Tormado. This album, in my opinion, is very, very underrated. I really don't think... I mean, a lot of Yes fans say that this isn't a really good album or just, you know, like an okay album. But in my opinion, this is a really good album. Now... Compared to all their other albums that Yes put out in the 70s, I would have to agree with those Yes fans. It's not good. But, overall, when you're talking about, like, their future stuff, um, Tormato is basically probably one of their best albums that they put out later, in the late, in their later years. Aside from 90125, of course. Um, my, some of my favorite Yes songs are, are on this album, like Don't Kill the Whale, Circus of Heaven, and of course, Magical. Future Times is also fun as well. But I really like Magical, that little harpsichord stuff that Rick Wakeman does. It's just amazing. This album is basically like a John Anderson, Rick Wakeman only album. Not, I and Chris Squire too, but um, not really a lot from Steve Howard, Alan White. But, you know, in my opinion, that's fine, I guess. But... Overall, um, this is this is a really good, this is a fairly decent album, in my opinion. I really don't think it deserves the flack that it gets. Um, moving on to number 12, the 2011 album, Fly From Here. Okay, like with, now, I know that all three of the albums that, never, that didn't feature John Anderson are on this part, but for me, Fly From Here is the best 
of the non-John Anderson albums. Um, mainly because of the side one title track, which is kind of split into a little, into a bunch of mini tracks. Um, really, it takes you like on a journey. See, I feel, I feel like it kind of brings back memories of the early Yes, like with Tales from Topographic Oceans or Relayer or all that fun stuff. Basically just taking you like on a nice musical journey and you can vividly imagine what is going on throughout the course of the song? Benoit David, who is who sings on this album, and Trevor Horn I mean, does a really good job. This album was remixed with with the vocals of Trevor Horn in 2018, known as "Fly From Here Return Trip." I personally enjoy the original covers a little bit better. Um, David, I mean Benoit David, does an amazing job. He almost sounds like John Anderson, almost. But however, he's well. But, however, he's just not, eh, you know, eh. Um, so, yeah, with, without, with that said, that is number 12, Fly From Here, from 2011. And number 11 is the 1994 album, Talk. This album, like with Tornado, I feel like this album is vastly underrated. Like, my favorite songs on here are The Calling, and, of course, that epic, Endless Dream. Endless Dream, probably... In my top 20 favorite all-time Yes songs. But, yeah. Endless Dream is just an amazing song. Great, strong ending to this album. This is the album... To f this is the final album to feature the 90125 lineup. Um, does some great stuff on here. And who would have thought that Trevor Rabin could also play piano, too? I certainly didn't. So, yeah. This is a... This is, in my opinion, a really good, a really underrated album that definitely deserves more attention. And finally, the final album that we're going to be talking about on this part is the 2001 album Magnification. This is the final album to feature John Anderson on lead vocals. This is the only album to feature a orchestra instead of a keyboard, well, with the exception of Alan White actually playing piano on this album. Um... This album is fine. I mean, I don't... A lot of Yes fans say that this is a pretty good album, I guess. Um, but for me, it's middle of the pack. Mainly because, like with Open Your Eyes, there's not really a lot of great material. But, unlike Open Your Eyes, that orchestra completely saves this album from being anywhere lower on the list. Um, this is a really great... This is a really good album. That orchestra stands out. Like, oh, mm, mm. Um, the epic dream time is on here. I like Give Love Each Day and Don't Go. Um, all those fun songs on this album. And it's sad to say that this is the final album to feature John Anderson on lead vocals. He definitely had a monster career with the band. So that does it for part one. My list from nine from number 19 to number 10. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we'll be getting through the final nine albums, my top nine favorite Yes albums in the next Yes album rankings video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. This is Water Dive 122, signing out, ready to dive, and more fun on YouTube. Thanks for watching.